So what I want people to get reintroduced to is the best of them because everybody tells me they want to get introduced to the best version of them. My question is, how will you get in introduced to the best version of you? How will you become the best version of you if you don't leverage the best things about you? Those two things don't make any sense. And so uncommon is just a reference to the fact that everybody out there is a one of one. If you line up, David, your personal background, your personality traits as a kid, your personal attributes you've developed, your work experience, personal experiences, and your passions, and you line those up, they are different from everybody else on the planet. Hey, what's up, Masters? Welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. And today we have a special treat for you guys. We are with Mr. David Spisak. I hope I even said your last name right. I probably should have you, asked you. You nailed it. Army. You pronounced it better than my mom does. I Oh, wow. Okay, well, that that's uh, <laughs> I'll take that. Good stuff, man. <laughs> well, it's, I'm glad we were able to make this happen. It's, uh, it's really good to have you here with me today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and thank you for the invitation to join and hello to everybody listening in on Clubhouse. Thank you for taking the time to listen and I, I hope I can deliver some value to all of you. Man, you always deliver value and that's why I'm excited to have you here. And yeah, we are on Clubhouse. We're streaming on LinkedIn, Facebook, as well as YouTube right now. So you guys can check us out on any of those channels and then listen, make sure you subscribe to Path to Mastery Podcasts. And um, David, so you and I, uh, we actually met on Clubhouse, which uh, which is interesting. A lot of, I met a lot of people, cool people. You know, every, time, every time somebody says that, it makes Clubhouse sound like a dating site, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I guess it so How did you two meet? Well, we met on Clubhouse. Yeah. Uh, but this is true. I, I was actually saying to somebody just yesterday, you know, um, Clubhouse has had definitely its iterations, its ups and downs. You know, there have been times where people, it was the greatest thing in the world. And other times when another app would come in uh, competitive and all of a sudden people would say, oh, Clubhouse mm. is terrible. Um, personally, I am uh, personally, I am very thankful uh, for the for the folks and the team that have created and um, and brought to all of us clubhouse because at a time when we really needed it the most, I think a lot of us, uh, when we couldn't get together, you couldn't assemble a group of people. You couldn't get together for a big event. There was no biggest, big conferences to go to no real opportunities to network. We all had the ability to jump on clubhouse. <clears throat> the other thing I'm thankful for is I have met some just extraordinary human beings like yourself, David, through Clubhouse. And let's be honest, we would not know each other if it was not for Clubhouse. And lastly, what makes Clubhouse very unusual, unique, is that for any of you out there who have had the opportunity to be able to go essentially take relationships, people that you see on Clubhouse, take it off of Clubhouse and somehow meet in person. Maybe you went to a 10X event. Mm. Maybe you went to a business event. Maybe you just happen to be in the same city. But when you do that, it's interesting that when you run into those people, you feel like you've literally known them your whole life. It's that, wild. Because you kind of have. So I think Clubhouse has been awesome. And it's a tremendous way to, at any time, for any reason, and for anything you want to learn or know, that you could instantly have access to different perspectives, different experiences, different approaches that could bring value. And I certainly hope, David, I can bring value to your uh, to your listeners here today. And I know you will, absolutely. And you know, here here's the thing with you and I. You know, I, there's a lot of people in Clubhouse, and there's a lot of, um, you know, it's a voice app, so you can hear people in in. Every time I've heard you share, it's just been, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's, it's good. It's practical advice. Um, you know, I just really, really resonate with your message. And then I was on your, 
you do a, a free coaching call or group. I don't know if it's still sure. free, but I know you do. And I went on that, that, that group one, one Friday and I was like, wow, that it just blew me away with the information that you shared with people for free. You weren't charging anything. It was just like such, such really good business advice. So I just want to say first, I just appreciate that about you more than you're one of the few people I would say that about on the app. I mean, there's, there's all this that hang out in our club breakfast with champions, but um, there's just not, unfortunately there's not, there's not a ton of that. Well, I appreciate that. And, and I'll tell you where that <clears throat> came from. I had been spending time in rooms in Clubhouse for a number of months, uh, call it from January 2021 up through about May or so. And it started becoming a regular person on stage with Breakfast with Champions along with you and some other really nice people. Um, and I started to hear more and more about people that were offering coaching classes. And there's nothing wrong with that, except for the fact that some of them um, were doing things that I felt was not honestly in the best interest of the people they were purporting to help. I also felt they were not being completely transparent. Number one, and I thought it was interesting how um, there were people out there that are still uh, completely not thinking, uh, not putting two and two together that whatever you assert or say, I can look up on Google, mm -hmm. right? Now it's yeah. not going to give me your complete, it's not like IMDB is for, for, um, if I'm an actor, but I can find out, you know, if somebody goes out and purports that they're going <clears> to <throat> blow my Instagram up, for example, <clears throat> David, and, and they would hit me on LinkedIn. They would hit me on IG. They would tell me on Clubhouse. They would say, hey, I've got this coaching class or master class for 1500 two grand, three grand. And I go on to IG and I'm like, wait a minute. Like, I don't know anything about IG and I got 10,000 followers and you've got 3,000 followers. <clears throat> so I'm trying to understand how what process you've used to get yourself 3,000 followers is somehow going to blow mine up. And so I started, you know, listening to some people, hearing people making a lot of promises that I felt were outlandish and were uh, trying to charge what I thought was an unreasonable amount of money. And knowing that so many people out there are just trying to figure life out, let's face it. Um, and they're trying to figure out their business. They're trying to grow their real estate firm. They're trying to grow their solopreneur project or their business project or become a better manager or leader. And so what I wanted to do was to provide very in-depth, real world, proven, battle tested um, information that they could use to immediately improve their outcomes, their results. And because of what I've been hearing, I wanted to go the other way and say, listen, I'm going to give that to you for free because I don't want the financial side to be your hindrance. So because I'm not charging you, if you want to go learn some valuable things, for example, from David Hill on real estate, you now have the money to go do that because I'm not asking you for any money for my expertise. So by doing that, I could support people that were doing a great job like yourself and at the same time support everybody out there who was simply trying to improve their results, their life, uh, so that they can improve the circumstances for their family, their friends, their kids, or whoever it might be. I love it, man. Well, it's definitely valuable. We'll, as as we get, you know, as we get near the end of the uh, the show, we'll let people know how they can connect with you, if as well as if that's still an opportunity, they can they can get involved in your your coaching. Um, a little bit about you. Uh, you are the uh, founder and chief consultant at Disruptive Growth Solutions, which is a firm dedicated to helping business leaders accelerate growth based on real world experience and tactical strategies. And yeah, that was the thing that I said earlier about you just so strategic and practical in your sharing and in your advice. Um, you were the president and CEO. Uh, you were previously president and CEO of um, Reverse Risk, a web based analytics program used by dealers to help manage their operations. Uh, you founded uh, Reverse Risk in 2008, sold it to Reynolds and Reynolds in 2016, 
Um, you've worked with many owners of leading groups to help them use data to optimize their performance and evaluate um, acquisition opportunities. Um, and you said, I'll give you the short, I'll give you the short version. So, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going to wrap after that, but 30 years in uh, retail automotive. So, yes. Yeah, the, 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 I'll try to stronger. give you the 60 second version, everybody. I was born yes. in San Francisco. I'm the middle of five kids. Um, uh, you know, childhood was not kind. Uh, I was very fortunate to have the most amazing uh, mother you could imagine. But my father was not a good human being and inflicted a lot of harm on myself and my siblings. Same so I don't you. know. I don't know what a regular you know childhood was like. I only know my own uh, experience and it was tough. But long story boring, I came out of that and um, I decided to join the military after trying my hand at community college because I couldn't get into any normal college. We didn't have the money. And I frankly was acting out in high school to the degree that I didn't have a high enough grade to get a, a scholarship. I wasn't, I was athletic, played every sport, but none of them well enough to be able to get an athletic scholarship. So like a lot of kids, you know, I was a little bit, um, uh, X'd out. So that was an option. I, I joined the military, spent three years there, got out of the military, fell into a job in the car business. I had done a number of jobs previous to the military, including sales. I love sales. So I fell into a job in the car business, spent the next 40 years. I'm still in automotive retail, but I spent 25 years on the dealership side, David. I spent the last 15 building technology, software. I've built and sold multiple companies and Disrupted Growth Solutions is a boutique consulting firm where we um, have consulting clients um, from startups to nine and 10 figure companies. And I work with some of the uh, best, highest performing elite auto dealer groups out there in, in the planet as well. And in addition to that, I've got um, five, six different software platforms myself that we are incubating and building here. And, uh, and I serve on the, a number of boards as well. But most importantly, I've got four kids and a really cool wife um, that I don't just love, but I just, I like the heck out of her too. Amen, brother. I love that. And yes, I, I also have an amazing wife and three daughters and awesome. I just, my oldest daughter got married uh, three weeks ago now. And congratulations, 31 year old getting married and a five, five year old at the same time running to my house. So it's, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> well, amazing I've time. got 38, 34, seven and six. So, Oh, you're kind of uh, like me, man. If you, you? if you do the math, I took 27 years off for rest. I rested for 27 and reloaded with fatherhood 2.0. And they are, all of my kids are a blessing, but those is little it, guys. Is it the best thing you ever did, man? I, ever, I feel like for ever. me, it was so funny because People in my age group, you know, my contemporaries, if you will, are like, oh, my God, you're crazy. I'm like, no, 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 you're crazy, bro, um, because you're missing out at a time of your life. Think about it. When when we when we have taken on more experiences, more being able to start to accumulate some actual wisdom, right, and be able to get really comfortable in your own skin and start to kind of figure out a bit more how life works and what's important. How perfect is it to at that time to be dropped into your lap, the blessing of, of two little guys that I now get to have the opportunity every day of my life to look at the crazy world that we're all looking at through their eyes, to look at the future through their lens. Um, and if I have a tough day, the moment that I see them, it's not tough anymore. I'm instantly reminded of what matters most. When I have a good day, they make it a phenomenal day. So, you know, I, I see them as just being, you know, an incredible blessing. And I'm very fortunate um, to be able to, to have Fatherhood 2.0. And it's just a really, like I said, an amazing, amazing partner, my wife is. That's awesome. And yeah, I, I um, same thing. And, you know, I didn't know about your childhood. I very similar, I uh, just terrible, worst childhood possible I could have had. But you know what? I, I truly believe I went through that for a reason. And it's made me an amazing father to my daughters. And it's also given me perspective so that I've been able to go out and help children. I used to speak locally at all the schools yeah. to get back into that, you know, involved in my church with, you know, just so it just is 
created perspective for me so I can, I can, you know, I can relate to what some children are going through with. Hey, by the way, I got a shout out, uh, core element. I got a shout out, uh, Scott out there, Flansburg, uh, awesome. the best math brain in the business. Uh, Dr. Sean, uh, joined, uh, Michael Hearn, who has an incredible story. If people go to my website and listen to my podcast, there's a recent episode of Michael Hearn who, amongst many other things he's done in his uh, extraordinarily extraordinary uh, young life, uh, served uh, as part of the uh, Blue Angels team, oh, wow. uh, served as a member of the Blue Angels team for three and a half years, and a fascinating story. Um, and so I just want to shout these people out because we mentioned some of the people that we've had the opportunity to get to know and meet and listen to. And so uh, I just noticed a number of them uh, out there. And so I just wanted to say, Hey, so much love and respect to all of you, by the way. Absolutely. And Dr. Uh, Dr. Sean, sir, you're welcome to invite some people up and we will be opening up for questions, uh, in clubhouse in probably about 10 minutes or so. So cool. It's an FYI. So think about your questions. Feel free to come up to the stage. Um, so I want to, I want to jump to the topic, Dave, we're talking, David, we're talking about on achieving uncommon success. Uh, what, what, you know, I went to your website, to check you out obviously um and it says it, that's the first thing it says on on the site um before anything else it says um let me go back to it now just to make sure i say it right it says uh home david spizak achieve uncommon success i said it right the first time what exactly is uncommon success to you what does that mean well i i'm going to take it back further so it's a it's fascinating to me um People are fascinating. You know, the way the human mind works is fascinating. Um, I've studied, you know, along the way, uh, human behavior and behavioral dynamics and um, what causes certain people, what causes all of us to respond and react the way that we do, what causes one person to be able to achieve something and immediately think that that gives them license and the belief that they, if they could achieve that, they could achieve something more. Whereas there's other people that will achieve the same thing and go, okay, I did it. I'm good. And they'll stop there, you know? And what I've come to find when I examine my own life um, is that things started to go very, very well for me. The minute that I started to really get to live a congruent life, Everybody's chasing success. Everybody's chasing happiness. Everybody's chasing, uh, and success, however you, by the way, um, define that, but everybody wants to have fulfillment, success, and, uh, happiness. And, you know, the first thing I learned is that it's a little bit of a false narrative to go pursue happiness or success. The, the, the goal is not to achieve it. The goal is to sustain it. So you can meet people every day of your life who've been happy, but are they sustainably happy? You can meet people that have achieved success. Have they achieved sustainable success? Well, in order to do that, what I've learned is you've got to go back to when you were a kid. You've got to go back and reconnect with that human who at the age of five, six, seven, or eight, if everybody remembers, I really want you to close your eyes, remember who you were at that time. And I want you to all agree on one thing. Every one of you probably had boundless energy. Every one of you had a high degree of hope. Every one of you at some point, four, five, six, seven, eight, believed you literally could do anything. Every one of you locked on to passions for no other reason that it brought you joy. And the interesting thing is, is that we go through academics, we start learning to color in the lines, to stand in line, to sit at the same desk in the line, you know, to go through fire drills in the line. Everything is, is staying within a box or in the line. And it's starting to conform. And what happens is it starts to break down our spirit, so to speak, the things that we connected to that gave us that energy, that belief, and that hope. And what happens is I found that most people, there's a statistic that says about 75% of people in the world are not happy doing what they do for a living. Well, mm -hmm. I think that you'd probably find if you did exhaustive research that 75% of the people in the world are no longer connected 
to that human being they were, the things they loved, the passions they had. They're not connected to their personality strengths, the attributes that made them powerful. By the way, everybody, anybody who's out there like in real estate and you want to make a proposal and you want to negotiate well, you want people to say yes, and you heard about the need to be tenacious, who's more tenacious than a four-year-old or a three-year-old? Where the, if you any of you have kids and they ask for something and you say, I'm sorry, not now. And they ask again and again and again and again. So what happens is in most cases I've learned that people grow into not doing what they love to do or what they want to do, but what they have to do. And nobody gets energy, motivation or inspiration from a have to. We all get inspiration and motivation from a want to. And so I think that's been a real secret. You show me anybody who's been able to achieve a high level of sustainable success, a consistent level of happiness and fulfillment, and I'll show you somebody who's A, living a congruent life, and B, is connected to that same person. In fact, I ask people all the time, uh, David, when I interview them, tell me who, what you were like what your attributes are like. And I ask him, do you still have those attributes? Do you still leverage them today? Absolutely. Every major success story can connect those dots. So what I want people to get reintroduced to is the best of them because everybody tells me they want to get introduced to the best version of them. My question is, how will you get in introduced to the best version of you? How will you become the best version of you if you don't leverage the best things about you. Those two things don't make any sense. And so uncommon is just a reference to the fact that everybody out there is a one of one. If you line up, David, your personal background, your personality traits as a kid, your personal attributes you've developed, your work experience, personal experiences, and your passions, and you line those up, they are different from everybody else on the planet. And that makes you one of one, it makes you uncommon. So as I share with entrepreneurs all the time, what's interesting, I share with employees all the time, managers, it's interesting. You think your salary, your income, uh, what you make, what you can charge as a business is dictated by the market. It's not. It's actually being dictated by you. And what's dictating it is, frankly, your belief in you. How do you expect to get paid an uncommon amount of money if you don't connect with the uncommon parts of you? How can you become, you know, any human who's an ordinary human can become an extraordinary person and live an extraordinary life but not unless they put themselves into extraordinary circumstances. And oftentimes, David, if you think about it, the most extraordinary circumstances you've probably lived in, lived through, are the toughest ones you've lived Absolutely. through. They've, they're the ones you know, who, have, who have really shaped you into who you are today. They're the ones who have made you more resilient, stronger, tougher, more knowledgeable, more powerful. And yet people tend to try to stay away from those things, which really doesn't make sense. It's those hardships, those tough times, the rejection, the defeat, the, the, the people saying no, those are the gateways to the best days of your life, to the best times of your life, to the best outcomes of your life. So uncommon, if you connect to uncommon, you will understand who you are you will understand your true value and you will be able to face up to those adversities or obstacles in a way that you probably never have to this point because you'll be a far more powerful person in doing that. So what, how, what would you say, I guess, for, for, for people listening, let's say somebody does, isn't clear on that, how, how could somebody become aware of what makes them uncommon or, or what so makes I them actually, uncommon. I actually, over four of my coaching classes, I actually, um, I actually shared the exact process to be able to go through. And it's an interesting, fascinating process that every person I believe should go through because 
it will become a gateway. It will be an awakening, an epiphany, or at least a reminder of who you are. And it will help you catapult yourself or accelerate yourself towards where you want to go. So, you know, if you, I've got a Facebook community um, that's just my name, David Spizak's community. You see uh, uh, S-P-I-S-A-K, David Spizak's community. If you join that community, every one of the coaching calls I've done over the last year, you will have access to for free. And four of those in particular, you will find have to do specifically with uncommon and taking yourself through some exercises, a process that is so simple and easy to do and yet so incredibly powerful in the results it will provide you. And it's free. Can you give us, give us two of them now? Let's do the, if you could give us like the cliff notes on a couple of them just for people listening. Well, sure. I mean, I want you to start back, like I said, when you were a kid. And I want you to write down, if I was talking to a parent, a sibling, one of your friends, um, maybe even your teachers, I want to know what four, five, six, seven, eight-year-old David Hill, I want to know what was your greatest, your most dominant personality trait. So I want you guys to write that down. So let me, so see, I, I, let, I let, see what about someone like me that, you know, at that age, I would, I had a really, really bad childhood and my father, I, I was, I was, I didn't even speak. I was shy. I couldn't, you know what I mean? I was scared. I was in fear. What do you find? I, for me, I found grit. Like that's what I feel like I found. There you go. Persistence and perseverance. Resilience, persistence, Resilience. tenacity, right? Um, so that's exactly it though. You just said, well, I said, well, okay, well, what was your personality like? You'd say, well, I was timid. I was shy. Um, and I say, well, David, what was your favorite thing to do? I want you to think about your parents. Maybe your mom says, Hey, dinner's ready. And you said, mom, just five more minutes, just five more minutes. We all had something we love to do so much. We begged before bed or before meals, Please let me do it. Maybe it was outside riding bikes. Maybe it was climbing a tree. Maybe it was playing baseball. Maybe whatever it was. What was that for you? I get it. I have a five-year-old running around the house now. So <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So you got to think about what was your passion? What lit you up? What was your beliefs then? What did you believe you could do? What was your personality? What was your attributes? There's a difference, by the way, everybody, between your personality, personality traits and attributes. What's the difference? Personality traits, I want you to think of yourself from now on as an iPhone app. And that may sound preposterous, but it makes sense. Why? Because every one of us has been coded to respond and to react in a specific way under specific circumstances. Is that true, David? Yeah, 100%. Okay, so the way that you were coded as a kid caused you to respond and react in a certain way as an adolescent and as a, and as a young adult and as a, you know, where you are now. Now, what happens is when you combine that with defining moments, for example, Barbara Majeski was sharing with me yesterday on my podcast, you know, that uh, her dad had literally no money. They had to live in a one bedroom apartment, which was shared with his, his uncle, his brother, so it's her dad, his brother, her three brothers, and her, right? So you got six people living in a one-bedroom sleeping on the floor. They had no money. The car was a painting van. It only had two seats in the front. You with me? There's no seats in the back. So in the back, I mean, it was just a rough ride. But he made a point of taking them, if you could imagine how audacious this is, he took them all to a Ferrari dealership parked the van around the corner so the store wouldn't see it and walked him inside and said, hey, I want you guys to pick your Ferrari because I know we don't have the money now, but every one of you can have a Ferrari. And that embedded, it lit a pilot light. It was a defining moment that told her that just because of my circumstances today does not rule me out of the potential of getting anything that I want at some point in the future. And what she learned is this. 
I don't want the Ferrari. I want to learn what it took to get the Ferrari. Because I know if I do what somebody does to get a Ferrari, if I choose to, I can have one too. And so what happens, guys, is if you take this simple exercise, think about who you were as a kid. What did you believe? What was your hope? What was your zero to 10? What was your energy level? Zero to 10, what was your hope? Zero to 10, what was your belief? Zero to 10, what did you think you could accomplish back then? And I'll bet you you're pegging all 10s. When did that start to drop? Okay, did it, did it start to drop in middle school? Did it start to drop in high school when people started telling you how to think? Did it start to drop when you got your first or second job and somebody said, I'm not interested in your opinion. I just need you. I'm going to pay you seven bucks or 10 bucks or 12 bucks an hour. Go to the freezer, get the box, bring it out here and do what I tell you. I'm not interested. Another way. You know, did it start with there? Did it start when you gave up or you started to move away from living that congruent life? Did it start when you started allowing yourself to be defined by other people? Somebody told you what you can't do and you sanctioned their remark. You gave them power and took the power from you. And then when you look at people who have transformed their life, the very word transformed, if you think about it, I'm transforming myself from giving power away, sanctioning other people. I mean, when I go to a doctor's office with my kids, my wife's a physician. She's a million times smarter than I am. But one of the things I shared with her is when we go to a pediatrician, you know, I don't just say, oh, well, they got a diploma on the wall. They must know everything. No, they're practicing medicine. How many times has any of you gone to a doctor, gotten a prescription, taken the prescription home, took some of the prescription, nothing happened? You go back to the doctor. What's the doctor say? Oh, well, geez, try this one. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll try this one. But yet so many people will sanction and there's a great guy, I'll finish with this, Lou Tice, look him up, the Pacific Institute. His wife was diagnosed with terminal stage four cancer. Stage four. They gave her a very short period of time to live. And he went to get a second opinion. Guess what the second opinion was? Same thing. Went to get another opinion. And she was in the hospital at one point. He literally had a sign on the door, David, that said, don't come in to visit Diane unless you're going to talk to her about the future, mm. about the cabin we're building, about the vacation we plan on taking next year. Well, you know what's interesting? Diane passed away a few years ago. She outlived her doctor's prognosis by over 25 years. And she actually lived longer than her husband. So I'm not saying that doctors don't know what they're talking about. They certainly do. They know way more than us, for sure. But what I am saying is don't sanction people just because they said, this is what you're worth, or they said, this is what I think you can do, or they said, you shouldn't try this. Because like the great Steve Jobs said in his commercial, or his commercial said, those who are crazy enough to think they could change the world are the ones that do. So Uncommon. true. I love that. Um, you, you reminded me of a, an older short movie. You may have seen it. I, I think it was narrated by Zig Ziglar. And they talked about the SNIOP. Are you familiar with that acronym? Yeah. Susceptible to other people's negative uh, or sus what is it? SNIOP. Susceptible. To so negative other, opinion. Yes, negative opinion. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that. Yeah. So I mean, and it's so easy to do. I want everybody to think about this too. You've got a five-year-old. Five-year-old. UCLA did a study a gazillion years ago. How many times does a kid hear the word no by the time they're five years old? Yeah. You know what it is? Hundreds of thousands of times. Everybody who's got a kid, and if you don't have kids, you were a kid. How many times did you hear the word no the first five years of your life? More than a half a million times. More than a half a million times. How many times did you hear the word yes? A fraction of that. So is it any wonder that it takes no effort for anybody to have a negative thought creep in their brain, but it takes consistent effort to main positive thoughts in your brain? There's a reason. 
reprogram yourself. Reprogram yourself into being a better app, a more valuable app just like those iPhone apps. There's apps on there that aren't worth a dollar. You know it, I know it. You downloaded it. You thought it was going to do something that was utter and complete crap. Never used it again, deleted it. There's other apps you can't live without. Be that app. And you know what? Everybody can. You simply need to understand what your baseline original code was. You need to understand what the most powerful things about your app, your life, your personality was and you've got to stay connected or get reconnected with them no child in the history of kids is going to effortlessly get a straight a year after year on any subject they hate you ever notice that show me a kid who hates math and i'll show you a kid whose parents have to tell them to do their homework every night and to study every night but show me a kid who loves math and I'll show you a parent who's never had to tell them to study or do homework. When you're doing what you love to do, you're going to work hard. It's going to be play to you, and you're going to be great. There's a clue there. Yeah, 100%. When you're in your purpose and, and you're passionate about it, it's, uh, it's critical. I'm actually reading a really good book right now. I'm not sure if you read it yet. It's called The Art of Impossible, Stephen Kotler. No, I haven't read it. A really, really solid book. He'll, he's going to be on my podcast in uh, in September. But yeah, just amazing. He talks about he talks about you know being really passionate, like how how important passion is and purpose, and also curiosity. But uh, he's, I'm not going to go into all that right now. I do want to see though. We got we got some people on stage. Uh, D has come up. Dr. Sean, do you guys have a question for for David? Either you have a question, or if you do. Um, Feel free. Yes, yeah, Dr. Sean, good to see you, sir. Anytime I get to listen to David speak, I do. You invited me up to stage, so I was honored to do so. Thank um, you, Sean. I think the I think the question that I always have for David, and I don't think I ever ask it whether we're texting or what, is how do you stay consistently positive? Because hmm. you're a pretty positive person. You know what I'm saying? You don't. You, I, I know that bad things happen to you. I know that bad things have happened. They really do, man. I've had a rough year this year. It's been tough on the, on the Good question, on some of the personal stuff, you know, with just health. Um, uh, but things do happen. I mean, Th things I mean, don't, really things do. don't go my way. Just like things don't go anybody else's way. In fact, I was sharing with my 38 year old daughter, you know, and my wife just yesterday, Sean, you know, I really believe in the saying that if your life is going phenomenally well, uh, okay or terrible, just give it a minute. It'll change. And that's the nature of life. So to answer your question, it's really all rooted in two things. Um, primarily, um, more than anything else, well, one is gratitude and the second is servitude. Um, I can always go provide service to somebody else. And it's an interesting thing in life, guys. You ever notice when you give somebody a compliment, it also lifts your self-esteem? You can't give somebody a compliment genuinely and not have it positively stick to you or impact you. And there's another clue. When you go serve the needs of others, it lifts you up. But it also reminds you oftentimes, I used to serve you know, in a, in a uh, mission in the Tenderloin, which was the toughest, most crime-ridden area of San Francisco. And man, what a tremendous reminder of, in the worst of times, how lucky was I? How blessed was I to have a roof over my head at that time? How lucky was I to not worry about where my dinner was going to come from? Things were not going well for me. But, and it was very hard on a lot of levels. My, my son was uh, experiencing a ton of health problems. And, um, you know, it was just a lot of tough times. Um, but serving others changes your brain and it, it does another thing. It reminds you that, that you have the power, um, to be able to, uh, inflict good to improve the lives of others. One of my favorite prayers, it's my own little thing, but every day I just say a simple prayer and I pray that I will leave people better than I found them. Think about that. How hard is that? That might just be smiling at a homeless person as I walk by saying, hey, how are you? 
Good morning. Just acknowledging they exist. It might be telling a server in a restaurant that's short on servers these days, don't worry about it. I'm fine. You look stressed out. Go do your thing. I'm okay. I'm about to get the best service of my life. You know what? Every one of their tables is also going to get the best service of their life. Servitude is magical. Second one is gratitude. I literally wake up every single day thinking about and thankful for at least three things. I, I will think of three things I'm incredibly grateful for and that oftentimes is going to start. Um, I'm not a religious person. I'm a spiritual person, but I'm thankful for my relationship with God. I'm thankful for my dear family. Um, I'm thankful that I have the opportunity for another day. And if you ask my wife, what's the first thing that usually comes out of my mouth um, is good morning. And the second thing is thank you for my day. And when you start your day that way, it just, again, it puts a level of, I don't know, it's an insurance policy. It's a buffer. It gives you a little bit extra in you to be able to withstand the blows that life hits you with. And the last thing I want to share with you is I think one of the greatest superpowers in the planet is curiosity. Um, you will rarely find, interestingly, a curious person who is arrogant. They're almost mutually exclusive. You will not find a curious person who doesn't have a fascination. You won't find curious people that don't want to learn from literally everybody they meet. Curious people have this unquenchable thirst for knowledge. Curious people tend to be happier than people that aren't curious. So I'm thankful, you know, if you ask me my personality traits when I was a kid, I had no reason to be audacious, but I was probably a little bit audacious. Um, I was an extrovert. I was the smallest kid of every year of my life. I was tipping five feet tall and 93 pounds as a freshman in high school. And oh, by the way, I had a pirate's eye patch. Because I had a, I had a, <laughs> I had a muscle dislodged in my eye, and I had to wear. It. So can you imagine? I'm a member of the chess club with a pirate's patch, five feet tall, ninety three pounds. I was the entire package, everybody, and yet I had a phenomenal high school career. Not necessarily academically. I wasn't dumb. I have a decent brain, but as a way of you know, acting out as kids often do when they get brought up under really hard circumstances. I did that, but I had extraordinary relationships and I had extraordinary experiences. And as I was sharing with somebody yesterday, please keep in mind, Sean, for any of us, we are gonna go through tough times. The vast majority of the time, it will not be readily apparent why it's happened or what the benefit of this is. But as I was sharing with Barbara Majeski yesterday, you know, there is a number of things that she brought up on the podcast that I connected the dots. And I said, can you imagine those tough times when at the age of this prepared you to withstand something else? And that, was, that prepared you on how to respond. And that prepared you. And all of you are being prepared for something extraordinary. You just simply have to allow yourself to participate in those extraordinary circumstances. Don't run from it. Don't hide from it. Turn into the storm. Deal with it. Um, and react any way you want. As a human being, if something horrible happens, you have full license to react whatever way you want. The secret is being able to move from reaction to response in a reasonable period of time and making certain that that response is leveraging the learnings and not leveraging some type of victim mentality. Does that help, Sean? Well, it certainly helps me. And I, I'll tell you, curiosity um, has been a game changer for me David and recently, and I literally have just in the last couple of months picked up this book and, and I'm going to ask you a question in a minute. Um, the final question, which uh, will probably explain why it's had such an impact on me. Um, but how do people, if people are interested in getting in touch with you or, or want to be involved in your coaching and just let people know what you have going on and, and how do they get involved? So, um, 
if people want to reach out to me, and I, I always uh, love connecting with people, like most people, my enemy is time. Um, you know, I, I do have a lot of different uh, companies that, that I own or I'm partners in, and I'm on the board of a number of others, and I have a nonprofit that we haven't spoken about, which is called Equality for All, that uh, my wife and I have been deeply involved with. Um, but, you know, I believe that meeting people, engaging with people is important. And so I really try to make some time every week. If you want to reach out, you could find me on LinkedIn and DM me there. The second way is hit me up on Instagram. And this is not a self-serving thing. Trust me, please. But follow me before you DM me. Because what I've learned on Instagram that I didn't know before is if somebody doesn't follow you, any DM goes into this black hole general mail inbox that is, there's just so many messages in there. It'd be hard to find. Um, if, if you want to join a coaching class, you can DM the word coach or coaching in my Instagram and that'll get you an immediate link. And last but not least, if you go to Instagram, probably the easiest thing to do is you'll find a link tree in my bio which has direct asset access to my podcast on Spotify and Apple. It has access to my LinkedIn and anywhere else that you could find me. So David, I really wish everybody the best. And I thank every single person for taking the time to listen. I appreciate you all. And David, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and um, I haven't asked too, because uh, you mentioned in the beginning, you have six software companies and, uh, part of my curiosity is something I've been work, walking around with for 15 years is a, is, a, is a product built on conversational AI. And that's what I'm not exaggerating. I've been watching videos. I've been studying it. Um, it's, it's on my mind. I'm writing about it every day. And then you mentioned that. So I, I have to uh, figure out how to connect with you. And I want to talk, tell you, talk to you about my project and Please see if do. there's an opportunity somewhere. So we'll, we'll make that I will happen. tell anybody, anybody out there um, – <clears throat> You know, what I've learned about building software for 15 years is it's brutally hard. The process is mind-numbingly hard. It's brutally hard and completely possible. Put those two things together. So as long as you're in love with the journey, um, the outcome is completely predictable. You'll be fine. You will accomplish what you want to accomplish. You just have to be willing to go through just man it is just a ton of work to scope something out and um and just the thousands and thousands and thousands of uh elements that you have to kind of work through um but it's completely doable and the beauty is you can hire people that actually love doing that first as long as you've got the concept you know, and you've got some money or some backing, you can go do it. And it's pretty cool. And best yet is the technology that exists today actually can handle conversational AI. A good example of that is a company called Gong, uh, gong.io. And what they do is they listen to conversations for sales organizations like real estate, and they literally can read the emotions of of the people either via text or conversation. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's pretty freaking accurate. That's awesome. Well, you read my mind, my friend. Um, Final question. Um, You know, path to mastery is the name of my podcast. What does, uh, what does path to mastery mean to you? Um, (laughs) I, I, as I tell people all the time, it's having a relentless nature. Um, if you think about it, name somebody, if you're relentless, you're unstoppable, right? So number one, you have to have a relentless nature. Uh, no matter what comes in front of you, you will keep going. That's all you have to do. Your only requirement is to keep going. Second thing, curiosity, um, because the curiosity will fuel your desire to know. Third thing, knowledge. Dedicate 30 minutes at least read 10 pages a day. And in five years, you're a subject matter expert. In seven years, you would be considered one of the world's leading authorities. And lastly, network all the time. Get outside, 
to never eat alone if you can't help it. In fact, there's a good book called Never Eat Alone. But anywhere you're around, really understand the difference between meeting somebody and actually having a network. Build a powerful network. Um, somebody, as somebody said, show me somebody's friends and I'll show you their future. It's 100% true. As the great Jim Rohn said, you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most. Your network is the other most powerful thing. I hope that helps. Yeah, tremendous, man. Thank you. I, again, appreciate your time. Thank you so much. I'm glad we were able to make this happen today. Me too. And thanks for having me on and everybody who's hung out here. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, if you'd be so kind, check out the podcast. And if you do, if you'd be so nice, please leave a review or take the time to subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. Um, thanks awesome. so much. All the best to everybody. Yeah, me as well. Appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Let me end this broadcast.